I thought that it was it was props. I thought it was fireworks or some type of I don't know what it was, you know. I had no idea where the bullets were headed or coming from. It was just and I heard this pop 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 pop. I thought it was the speakers. Boom boom boom. Happened again. Bop, 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 bop. I was like looking for like fireworks. And the third time was even louder. It was like really, really loud. All you hear is screams. I just hear bullets just whiz by me, hit near me. A girl 10 feet in front of me, she was shot in the head. I still can hear the gunshots in my head. So right now we're on the 38th floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort, and just six floors below us is where the shooter opened fire in room 32135. So this is the view outside of my hotel window right now, and it's directly above where the Route 91 Harvest Festival took place. There's still a lot of debris on the ground. There's lawn chairs that are still there. Jason Aldean's tour bus is still parked. We can also see a lot of investigators walking around, looking for clues, looking for evidence. I'm sure bullets. It's just, you know, everybody just dropped what they had, all of their physical belongings, and ran for their lives on Sunday night because that's all that mattered at that point. about 6 p.m. and I'm about to leave my hotel waiting for an Uber driver to pick me up. I'm gonna head to a vigil. What's up, man? How's it going? Oh, man, I'm good, man. How you doing, dude? Good. Yeah. So where were you on Sunday night when this all kicked off? Oh, man, I was uh, doing Uber and I was working Uber. Uh, I get to the festival around 10 o'clock. I, I pull it to Las Vegas Boulevard around 10 o'clock, 10:10, and 22,000 people. It just imagine Filter Street, like a New Year's Eve. It was just that crazy, everybody running every which way. Um, I then had three party goers run up to me and just desperately asked me to take me as far as away from here. The first the couple I took home, the first party, uh, with the three passengers, she was in my seat, uh, backyard. She had blood on her legs. And her husband, he was like quiet at times, but like every 10 minutes he would, he would, uh, like have a shock treatment or like, you know, just almost like Tourette's like, you know, oh, what happened? What the f just happened, you know? He was just in shock. And then she's on the phone crying hysterically. And uh, she finds out towards the end of the ride that her friend passed away. And she told me that she was out here from California for the weekend for the festival. And her friend was shot. Um, and uh, she said she had the best night and the worst night of her life in the same night. Oh man, dude. It was crazy. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Are you just We're in shock now. right now? Um, yes. Yes and no. I'm a big anti-gun, or not anti-gun, I am a big gun. I'm caring right now to keep everybody safe here if something happened. That's just Well, there's my a little beliefs. bit too many guns, sorry. To see how many that was in his room, and to see how many was at his house. Right. That's a little scary. I it don't know. It is scary. I mean, that's, to know that somebody has that many guns. Especially fully autos. Fully autos are only meant for military mm -hmm. and police officers. I'm a veteran, and... Horrible. What do you think needs to be done? Guns. These these weapons they have out. You know, it's ridiculous. heading to the blood donation bank right now here in Las Vegas. We've heard that there's a really high demand for blood because of all of the trauma victims that have been sent to the hospitals. We're gonna go over there and talk to some of the people who have decided to donate blood today.
So you're the first person to get her? What time? 2 a.m. Wow. We got McDonald's. We got Jack in the box. Yes, there we go. There you go. Here's a napkin there for you. It's 9 o'clock right now and the doors to the blood donation center are about to open. You can see how long the line is already. It's not even open yet. So it should be a day full of lots of blood donation. We've been out since three in the morning. Three in the morning? Yeah. So that's what, almost six, six and a half hours? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, 6.30 yesterday, and then we weren't able to donate, and so... Wait, sorry, yesterday you came at 6? Yeah, yesterday at 6.30, and people from California, like Brandon there, drove in just to donate. Wow, from California, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a bunch of posts, people saying, like, you know, there's some need of blood, and um, that's the last straw. I was like, all right, I gotta figure something out, see who wants to go, um, then just get the ticket when I had the chance to. You flew in yesterday, and you're getting your blood drawn right now, yeah. and then you're going immediately back to the airport? Okay amazing. We received, you know, about 200 patients in that first couple of hours um, of care that we were able to triage and move through. 50 of them went to the operating room within the first day. 75 of them ended up staying. The rest uh, went home. Unfortunately, we, we did have to deal with 16 fatalities. You know, 200 people in a matter of hours. How is that even possible? We practice. Mass casualty events, so we set up an incident command system, which is really a well-known structure for managing these types of events. We also drill two to three times a year on different kinds of incidents. Never really one of this scope and size. This is just unprecedented in terms of the number of people in a short period of time. But the ideas were all there. People knew what they were supposed to do. And, you know, obviously 22,000 people in this space, um, you know, running out of the venue and stuff like that. There were, there were a lot of trampling issues, There were. Too, so, right? you know, what we saw 200 people, 124 of them had gunshot wounds. That means the remaining 70 to 80 really were injuries related to falls, scrapes, um, could have been just a twisted ankle, um, you know, or, or being trampled. And we did see all spectrum of that. And how many patients total are here right now? So right now, in the building right now, we have 57. Okay. And 23 of those are still critical. But again, some of the injuries were very severe. Right now we're heading to go meet Jay Purvis, who headed up security for the music festival last Sunday. He's the vice president of the company CSC. Here we are. Let's go. So the car was parked over there, and people jumping over it. Wow. So these are the dense. Yeah, because the fence line across the street from gate six, it was like, it all came down as people were jumping over it. Wow. So the fence actually fell onto your car? Fence, and then people, you see the blood and stuff. So that's blood? Yeah. My God. Look up there and see the windows blown out. So take me back to Sunday night. When did you know that something was wrong? As soon as we heard the first shots, I was in the Air Force for 20 years and um, I, I knew what I was hearing. It was probably the worst 37 hours of my life um, going through what I did with my team. What do you want people to know about the work that your team and other teams like yours do? We truly are the first responders in many, in many people's eyes because we're right there in the thick of things when everything is going down. All the video clips that I've seen, you see those yellow shirt CSE security folks and the supervisors in the blue shirts jumping into the crowd trying to help people and get them to safety. I just want people to realize that the yellow shirts are the guys that really are the unsung heroes. So you were in charge of how many people that day? We had over 200 people working the event. It took us until yesterday to find the last three folks that we were missing but everyone is safe now, uh, except for you know the two gentlemen that were injured by gunfire, and then of course, the losing of Eric. So tell me about Eric. Eric Silva is a shining star. He's been working for CSC for three years. Um, he was 21 years old. He, he provided for his family. He was in the barricade pulling people over when he got hit and went down. He was special. He was loved by all here at CSC, and um, we're gonna make sure we honor him for many years to come. Last year, I was in Orlando covering the Pulse nightclub massacre. 
At the time, it was the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. Not anymore. That distinction now belongs to the tragedy in Las Vegas. 58 are dead, over 500 are injured. These horrific shootings, whatever their root cause, whatever their motivation, have become far too common. Yet we obviously haven't figured out how to prevent them. Four of the five deadliest shootings in modern American history have occurred in the past decade. This year, from January 1st to October 3rd alone, there have been 273 shootings with four or more victims. That's seven and a half mass shootings a week. Thousands of Americans have died in these incidents, including the heroic security guard you heard about in this video, Eric Silva. There's a link below to the GoFundMe created to support his family.